Hey, Ag Teacher Thoughts here, uh, coming to you from our school's chemistry lab. And I wanted to talk to you about a little bit of an experiment that I've been doing with my students, uh, something that was only made possible by a scientific paper that was published and released last month. So some of you might be thinking, wait a minute, you're an ag teacher. Why are you reading scientific papers? Let me give you a reason. This scientific paper happens to be on a topic of a subject that I teach. Uh, in this case, uh, like any good shop teacher, I teach concrete. So in my fabrications class, we're going to be building a greenhouse structure and that's gonna require a, 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 a concrete foundation. So I teach concrete, I give a little bit of history about it, I talk about reinforcement, we learn uh, how to, uh, you know, we build picrete. Picrete's another one, I'll save it for another video, but we use picrete to teach reinforced concrete, fiber reinforced concrete. But one of the things that we talk about in concrete is the history of concrete. And the scientific paper relates to a very, very interesting history that just happened uh, last month. So there was a couple of uh, folks or a, a whole team, I don't know how many, uh, but they came together and they were researching one of the oldest forms of concrete. So that would be your, your Roman concrete. So if you've seen the aqueducts, uh, those are the Roman structures that they used to carry water. They look like big arched bridges, but it was Roman engineering to carry water. Now the aqueducts were built roughly 2000 years ago and they're still standing and they're made out of concrete. Now, if you think about around your own home or your own community about concrete and how long it lasts, I mean, for some of us, you might have poured, say, a concrete sidewalk 15 years ago and it's already crumbling. But the Romans built aqueducts 2000 years ago and they can still hold water. So that's what the paper was about, is how does Roman concrete hold water? when modern concrete fails so quickly. So they did some research by looking at uh, microscopic images and microscopic chemistry of that, basically taking pictures, looking at the elements in there and how they fluoresced and they were able to tell what chemicals were there. So one of the things that's interesting that they discovered is that normal concrete is different. It uses something called slaked lime. So that's a uh, a quick lime that's had some water added to it. They add a little bit of fly ash in there. They add sand, they add aggregate, uh, but they use a different form of, uh, of concrete to go in, or excuse me, cement to go in their concrete. I'm gonna use them interchangeably. I know some of you guys are gonna call me on it because it's not quite, quite right. So cement is the gray stuff that's the powder. Concrete is when you mix everything with it. So sorry about that, that's my correction. Okay, so I'll show you a little bit here. Get that little strap out of the way. So this is some concrete mix. It has aggregate in it, it's got sand in it, it's got cement in it. This is just a ready mix, okay? So that is what we normally use is this. This is what we're building buildings out of. Um, this is what we are building sidewalks out of is slaked lime cement mix. This has got the, the gravel and the aggregate, so it makes it uh, concrete. Okay, the Romans added something different. So the Romans didn't have factories to work from. So they were working straight from this. This is calcium carbonate. This is limestone. So this is like straight from the quarry limestone. Uh, as far as we can tell, I was just talking to the chemistry teacher uh, a little bit ago. He, he and I both actually read the paper within a few days of each other. Uh, independently and then we we're chatting about it and I was like you know what let's do it so this is this is limestone uh, this is probably 40 or 50 years old uh, yeah those of you that can you can tell that with that type of lid um, but we took some of this and we have a blacksmithing forge out in our shop for doing blacksmithing well I take some of these stones which is calcium carbonate or CaCO3 and you bake it uh, 1,700 degrees for an hour, and what you get, oh, let me grab one of them. Um, 
what you get is this. I'm just going to go ahead and pour them out on the table. So when you bake it, you actually strip out the carbon dioxide and you switch from a calcium carbonate to a calcium oxide. So it goes from CaCO3 to CaCO, so calcium oxide. Uh, the other thing that that is known as is quicklime. All right, focus, there we go. So it is also known as quicklime. So if we add water to this, it will actually steam and boil that water. It has a very, very strong reaction to it. So I had my students take a mortar and, mortar and pestle and um, they ground it up and they ground our quicklime into a powder. Okay, so this is one of the student groups here. They ground that into a fine powder. Okay. So with normal concrete, we would take this quick lime and we'd add water to it and we'd add some clay and we'd add some ash to it and we'd bake it and we would get cement. But that's not what the Romans did. See, they found out that the Romans did things a little bit different when they were doing this, this research project. They discovered that the Romans were actually taking this quick lime or the CaCO, the, the calcium oxide, and they were grinding it into a powder and they were adding it to some of their, their mix. So they were adding some of this powder into their cement mix. Okay, now this stuff, like I said, it reacts really, really um, almost violently with water. Um, so when you mix it, let's see if we can grab another student project. When you mix it with water, it heats up. Okay, so this stuff, like I said, it'll heat water to boiling if you use the appropriate mixture of it. But the Romans were taking, were taking this quick lime like this, mixing it with some slaked lime, which has already got water and clay and ash and some ceramics mixed in it. And they were mixing the quick lime into there at the same time. Now, this stuff heats the water up and it forms uh, some different chemistry in here. You gotta read the paper to figure it out. But what the Romans were doing was they were adding it into here and it was heating that concrete up really, really hot as it was starting to, uh, as the concrete was starting to set. And what that did is it allowed for a, a whole different chemistry um, to occur within the concrete mix. And it made something really, really special. I know I'm kind of wandering here because I didn't really plan this one out. Um, but it made actually something that you would consider a, a self-healing concrete. Okay, so this is our standard concrete mix. This is a concrete mix that has quick lime added to it. And so when we add water to this one here, it's going to heat up and it's going to allow us to have some different chemistry. Now, the other thing that occurred with this, um, the other thing that occurs with this mix is when it heats up, it forms a different chemistry. So there's different bonds that happens and um, some of that quick lime, it uh, doesn't quite it doesn't all convert over, okay? So there's little bits and fragments of it that stay in the concrete mix, okay? So there's a little bit of quick lime that's in there. So if your concrete cracks, this quick lime that's left in there dissolves into the water and it will seep down into the crack and uh, chemically change a little bit and it actually fills the crack in. So really what it's doing is adding this quick lime into their concrete mix allows them to create a self-healing concrete. So you've got a structure that it can crack, but when it cracks, as the water runs through it, the, uh, the lime um, dissolves out of the concrete and then it, it solidifies and fills in in the, in the crack. So, um, it forms a really weird self-healing concrete. Um, and they did some more studies and realized, hey, it's that self-healing 
part of the, the concrete mix of Roman concrete that makes it last so long. So with modern concrete, once it cracks, the water will keep running through it and it's done. Roman concrete, if it cracks, the lime dissolves and fills in the crack and it heals the concrete and it, it fills in the, the gap and it won't leak water again. So I'll do a little bit more of a video. I'll try to plan this one a little bit better, but this is what we're adding together. And, and this one here, um, we're doing a 20% of the, of the quick lime in. So this was 200, this was 200 grams and this should be roughly 50 grams. So this one, when we mix it up, it's going to make a 20% uh, quick lime to, um, to concrete mix. Okay. So that is, we're going to shoot for that one and test that one out and see how that works. Now I'm going to travel a little bit. I think this is the one. Oh, I better put theirs back. Hmm. Seem to have misplaced one. Yeah, this one, if you look at this one, this one's a little bit wider. This is a 50% mix. Okay, so there's 50% quick lime in this one to our concrete mix. We're gonna see how that one goes. And I think this one was a 25%. So we did a few different a few different versions of those to see which one works better. Um, so we'll let you know how it goes. Uh, those of you ag teachers that are following me or find me, yes, I am writing a lesson series on Roman concrete according to this new study. So I'm trying to figure out how to write this lesson so you can also make Roman concrete. Um, but this is kind of, we're winging it right now. We're trying to figure out how it goes, but hey, I'm pretty excited. It's Roman concrete. So I'll tell you how it goes and I'll shoot a follow-up video and see if we've got some other info on it. All right, see you later.